Hey everyone, I'm back with another episode of Optimizing Ivy, this time focusing on Ivy's recovery. Tether recoveries are generally kind of bemoaned in the community for being relatively bad, but there's a lot more to them than most people realize, and often you have a lot more control over your recovery as Ivy than you might think. Betch put out a cool guide recently on how to edge guard Ivy, which goes over the basics of how her tether works and allows me to skip that, so you can read that, it's linked somewhere on the screen. Generally speaking, Ivy has one of two goals that she's tr when she's trying to tether to the ledge. Either to make it to the ledge without the other player already occupying it, forcing you into your tether hop animation, or to get on stage without incurring the 30 frames of lag from landing in the tether hop animation. A lot of people like to simplify her recovery to a 50-50, where she can either fade back and tether again if you don't give up ledge, or she fades on stage and can be punished. But Ivy has met so many more options to make this more complicated or even to reverse the situation on an opponent who isn't prepared for what she can do. So let's start going over them. Even before we up B, Ivy has a few things that she can do to try and make things easier for her. Because the way to punish tethers is to be holding ledge, let's talk about how to get people off that ledge before we hit up B. First and most obvious, if they're just sitting there after their invulnerability runs out, you hit them. You just back air them or forward air them depending on which direction you're facing while you're off stage. But against good players, that won't happen very often. So what's usually most effective is to jump backwards when you're at the height of the ledge and to throw a razor leaf. The reason why it's important to jump backwards if you're not already at max razor leaf distance from the ledge is because leaf slows down the further it goes. Meaning that at the end of its range, it's almost just a stationary hitbox that will catch anyone who didn't refresh their invincibility right before you throw it. It makes it almost unpunishable at that when you throw it at that range, unless you're fighting someone like DK or Mewtwo, who has a long enough range back here to just go out there and hit you. If the leaf hits, then not only do they drop off ledge and you can freely reel in, but you can usually just drop down and dare them, like so, reversing the situation entirely. In addition, if you got sent high, which a lot of the time you will, you can throw out seed bombs as you come down as you come down and aim them at the ledge, so that if your opponent isn't invulnerable at the time that they hit, they knock the opponent off, like so. If you know that you have a seed bomb coming down at the ledge, um, but will get there after you would normally tether, you can tether and just hang there, like I'm doing right here, and wait for it to hit them before reeling in. This is difficult because the angle you need to send it at depends on where exactly you are both vertically and horizontally compared to the ledge, so it takes a lot of time to get a feel for how you need to be angling the seed bomb, but it can come in really handy to be able to do all of this consistently. Now all of this is relatively easy to avoid if the opponent knows when you need to tether, because that, that they just refresh right before you need to do that. But Ivy's up air and dare allow her to control her vertical, vertical momentum in a way that makes it this ambiguous, and mixing up coming down faster up air, falling normally, and stalling with dare, as well as mixing in fast falling, can help make it really difficult for them to be invincible at the right times, which is when we can catch them off guard. But say your opponent is smart about refreshing their invulnerability, and you're still forced to tether when the opponent's sitting on the ledge. We're now forced into Ivy's tether hop animation, and we have a few different ways we can approach this, other than going on stage, taking 30 frames of lag, and being relatively easily punished, or fading back and hoping that they give up the ledge. We can try to fake them out, or we can go for a suicide. We can fake them out by looking either like we're going on stage, or looking like we're going off stage. If we fade off stage, it's generally assumed that we're going to tether again, because if we don't tether, it's usually thought that we will just fall to our death. But we actually have two ways to get back on stage without using a tether. We're only in actionable in the air for 20 frames after the hop starts. So we can actually just air dodge diagonally back on stage after we fade back. A relatively simple option that people tend to forget about. In addition, if we've used both of our tethers, people usually just assume that Ivy's dead if you fade back off stage. But you can actually input up B immediately after the 20 frames are done, and the little bounce you do when your up B fails to tether is still enough to put you back on stage if you do it fast enough. Alternatively, we can fake them out by pretending like we're going on stage and then edge cancelling the tether hop, which not only makes us actionable faster, but gives us back our double jump and all of our tethers. This is done by holding in after the hop and then rolling your stick back slowly towards um, off stage. It's hard to demonstrate this without a hand cam, but edge cancelling gives us a ton of options. 
Most simply, because it looks like we're landing on stage, if the opponent tries to get up and punish, then we just fall on onto the ledge, like I did here. Stracket thought that he saw me land on stage, because I touched stage, and assumed that he was safe to get up and punish, so I took ledge. If they don't bite and they wait on ledge anyways, we have a variety of options. We can double jump wave land back on stage. We can um, f phantom footstool them, which is where you footstool them while they're sitting on ledge and you get this big bounce. Or we can actually d um, just jump up and dare them as they're sitting on ledge without invulnerability. And chances are they won't see it coming and they will die. So as you can see, the ledge up the ledge cancel is one of the strongest things that we can do out of tether hop, simply because of how many options we get out of it. Finally, we have the option to give up on making it back on stage and trade stocks. Given that tether punishes usually tend to happen at higher percents, this can be well worth it sometimes, and we have a few ways to trade stocks with the person sitting on ledge. If we fade back and fall below the ledge just where up B's grab box would reach, up B will come out as the normal hitbox rather than a tether, and you can actually stage spike the person on ledge like I'm doing here by hitting their toes with the sweet spot. You can use beam in similar fashion, although obviously this comes at the cost of beam, and both of these will only work if the opponent holds ledge after you drop too low to tether again, um, since if they roll from ledge at that point, you're, they're safe and you've just died, slash and potentially given up beam. But you also have another option on characters with bad vertical recoveries. As soon as you come out of the 20 in actionable frames, you can nail and drag them down, fast falling just before the final strong hit would hit them, and they, they'll be dragged too low to make it back, like you're seeing here. This is something that can be really useful to incorporate suicides into your gameplay, but it's especially important to be using them not just after you've run out of tethers and chosen to fade back twice, because that's when people know that they can safely roll up from ledge and avoid getting killed. Um, you need to be mixing them into your gameplay when you still have tethers left to make people less comfortable holding ledge against you, especially when you fade back and dip low to your max tether reach, so it becomes ambiguous whether you're going to re-tether or drop just a little bit lower and stage spike them. And as a result, they might just give up ledge to make sure they don't lose a stock trying to take yours. The obvious caveat of everything I just said is that if the opponent calls out what you're doing, or has an option that covers both fading on and off stage, then you're in a bad spot, which is the nature of a tether recovery. If you take this clip right here, if I fade out, I'm getting off buried off stage with one less tether. And if I fade in, like I did, I get grabbed by DK. So I have no option to edge cancel or use any of the other tools covered in this video because my opponent was able to cover all of my options before I got that chance. And against some characters like DK, Roy, Ike, etc, your best bet is just to assume that all of your options can be covered and to DI accordingly. But if you're fighting a character that can't put out that kind of option coverage, then these tools can make their life a lot more difficult. The options covered in this video are intended to make them second guess themselves, both feeling scared to stay on ledge too long and at the same time to guess incorrectly and get up too early, giving you ledge. And hopefully, they can help you save some stocks. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Optimizing Ivy. I'm sorry it took so long since the last one was released. Because I can't play, this video ended up taking VODs, clips from VODs were possible, and then the other clips were recorded by the wonderful Minibulite. Um, I wasn't really sure what to do between clips, so I just had this filler screen. Let me know in the comments if that was good, or if not, what you'd like to see instead for the future, as well as comments on the new mic setup that I ended up using for this video. I also just wanted to say thank you so much for all the love and support I've gotten recently. Um, I can't say how much it means. I'll see you all next time when I'll be covering our options once we get safely to ledge. Bye!